Welcome to the I Am Podcast presentation of a master's class on fear. I'm your presenter, Sean Webb. By the end of this class, you're going to understand the emotion of fear better than any psych PhD on the planet. That said, here's how the class is going to go. Over the next number of episodes, we're going to discuss where the world is today in understanding fear, how that understanding falls short, then we'll present the components and processes in the mind that cause fear, then at the end of the class, we'll show you where your specific fears come from, and finally, what you need to change within you to remove all fear from your life permanently. And at that point, you will understand fear better than any psych PhD on the planet. But first, let's answer the question that might be floating around in your mind right at this very second. Why learn about fear? Well, in short, fear sucks. Fear is the response that, left unchecked, inhibits us from taking action to create an existence of happiness, joy, and fulfillment. Fear of change helps keep us rooted in the same old life ruts. Fear of messing up keeps us from trying new things. Fear of getting hurt keeps us from forging those great relationships with family and friends and romantic interests that are so nourishing to our souls. Our fears can keep us from ending a bad relationship, a bad job, a bad financial situation. In short, when all other excuses fall away, it's fear that's one of the underlying primary sources of pain and suffering in our lives. But what exactly is fear? Where exactly does this destructive, paralyzing force that sucks the courage out of life come from? Specifically, what causes it? And more importantly, because everyone's just a little bit different, what specifically causes fear within you? Well, today, we start that journey to answer those questions. By the end of this master's class on fear, you will not only understand the comprehensive definitions and permutations of fear, you'll understand the unique mechanisms within you that cause your unique set of fears. You'll better understand how fear limits your life, and you'll understand what must be changed within you to remove fear from your life completely and permanently. So, let's get going. First, let's look at what modern-day psychology thinks about fear before we fix those assumptions and evolve into a better understanding than humanity has today. Currently, there are two schools of thought on fear. The first comes from the neuroscientific community, which says fear is a function of the brain that is an evolutionary trait developed through natural selection over millions of years. The second comes from the psychological community, which says fear is a learned emotional response that is developed through interaction with people and the environment. In the neuroscientific camp lies the supporting evidence of natural fears that exist within us, like the startle response and a baby's natural fear of heights. In the psychological camp lies the supporting evidence of the subjectivity of fear, how two different individuals can be afraid of completely different things, and how some fears can be learned to be overcome. Well, the reality of fear is that it's a mixture of both the neurological and psychological definitions, mixed in with some extra stuff that neither side has discovered to this point. However, that said, with some very recent studies that were published just a couple of months ago, they are on their way to discovering those things. But that said, there are still huge gaps in understanding that both the neurological and psychological experts are missing about fear. For instance, the neurological folks are overlooking the consciousness of the cells themselves, and the brand new research that says conscious attachments of the cognitive mind can and do influence emotions. Their theory is partially disproved by the fact that different people become fearful of different things, and fear can be overcome. That doesn't lend itself well to the evolutionary fear model. The psychology folks are lacking in their view of a big picture model that allows for both innate and subjectively learned fears to coexist in science. For instance, they believe that fear is a learned response. However, one of the first tests that a doctor will perform on a brand new baby after he comes out of mommy's belly is called the Moro. And the Moro is where the doctor picks the baby slightly up off the bed and drops him down suddenly, triggering a response of flailing arms, which is assumed to be the baby's reaction to try to catch itself from falling. This is a natural fear response that is outside the current explanation that psychology has on fear. 
So what psychology doesn't understand about fear is that the fear response itself isn't actually what is learned, it's just the triggers that are learned in each individual. And neither side has a model to explain both sides of the equation. So you'd think a master's class on fear would be able to produce such a model, right? Well, of course. And here it is. This is our working mind model. It lays out the components of the mind that create our conscious existence. The ones we're interested in are down here. These are called the emotional influence system. And it's the operation of these four components that create every emotion you have ever and will ever experience. See, fear has a specific rule set that when the characteristics of the emotional influence system are meeting that definition, fear is generated within you 100% of the time, without exception. And this little fact is what blows all current understanding of fear out of the water. The fact is that there is a definition of fear based on these components that works 100% of the time within all humans, and that is what pushes psychology forward 100 years and allows us to present the master's class on fear. Regarding the emotional influence system, the four components are the equation of emotion, the definition of self within the mind, otherwise known as ego, attachment strength or attachment level, and finally, the valuation or valence adjustments of those attachments. Now, admittedly, this sounds much more complicated than it is. It's actually very easy to understand, and after you do understand it, you'll have a better command of fear in yourself and others than any emotional counselor could teach you for thousands of dollars in private sessions. And so next week, we'll pick up right there with the mind model and the components that create fear and generate your specific personal fears. Then in the coming class episodes, we'll move on to how you can manipulate the model so that you can manipulate and eliminate fear from within you. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to live a fearless life? So we'll see you next week. Thanks for being with us. And for the I Am Podcast Master's Class on Fear, I am Sean Webb.